Blessings. Blessings, all of you. It's so lovely to see your faces. Thank you. Thank you for coming. And may the air be thick with grace, Amma's grace, the Creator's grace. It's the same thing. Grace for the air around you be thick with grace. Whether you feel it or not, may it be so. We need grace. It's how we evolve. <laughs> we can't evolve without grace. If you just keep asking for grace, <laughs> it's one of the wisest things you can do. Just about everything. Yeah. And the more heartfelt, the more powerful the grace comes. Yeah. Yeah. It's how it works, you guys. If you call for grace like a desperate little child, Amma comes running, the angels come running, Krishna, Buddha, they all come running. And then we, we have to like retrain ourselves to receive it, to receive this grace. And this is what the spiritual journey really is. It's retraining of our cells, cells of our body. Okay, dear ones, questions. Let's rock. <laughs> When you ask a question, you open the door to the creator. You step forward in your bumbling humanity and ask a question. You're actually opening to, to grace, to the creator's energy. Simone, hi. Uh, hi. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. I feel so happy to be here. Um, so I reached out, I was telling you, Pramasuda, that, um, the word patience really stuck out for me. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't know really where to begin with it other than, um, sometimes I see around me, um, the people that I'm close to r really stuck in choices of primarily um, honoring the external world and, um, you know, amassing security, uh, working for security, like that's what we're supposed to be doing on this earth. Even um, like people that are in, on spiritual paths, it's so confusing. And I, um, what what I've done with it is use it as a mirror for what where I am that way. Mm -hmm. And um, that's the, the best I can do. And then just honor where they're at and their choices. And um, Sometimes though, it's so tricky and I find myself getting crabby and impatient. Maybe even judgy, it's terrible. I'm just gonna admit it. With people that, that are very close and dear to me and I don't really, it's like we're um, moving in different directions. And so the patience, the, just patience with the outer world and choices that seem to be more about control and having and being comfortable Simone, than being so the, with God. Yeah, yeah. Simone, yes. the, the thing about your question is there's no 
the focus is all on them, kind of. It's like, what about you? Like, yeah, what about you? Okay. So yes. me, yeah. So me today, you receive permission to come into your own body and existence more. So you're right. It's they're a mirror. But what we can do is we can get stuck in our heads looking at a mirror, you know, rather than actually receiving the lesson. What I can tell you is that if if you're having negative thoughts about people close to you, it's more uh, it's more honorable to distance. Do you see? Because the negative thoughts hurt you and they hurt them. Mm -hmm. It's like you're you're wanting to keep an attachment. You're trying to kind of do somersaults and backflips to figure out how to keep this attachment and be comfortable about it all. Right. Right. I know it hurts. It hurts. It really hurts. But what the hurt, what will heal the hurt is you'll get a soul retrieval. You'll get Simone's energy coming in to heal this. Do you see? As you step away a little bit, make more distance then you'll be open to your you'll be opening to your true energy that's the shift that's the completion of the shift and then you'll find out more who you really are and who you really want to be with you know premisuda that's already happening i'll say this isn't consuming my life there's a lot of space, like you say, for grace. And, but I do notice, you know, the, I'm talking about like my best friend and we're growing apart. And so I have to make choices and I do. And it, does it hurt? Mm. It's uneasy. It's uncomfortable. Um. I'm just, I, I question um, whether to distance or face what's happening and ask myself, you know, about the mirror and everything. And so I do. And then the relationships, they grow apart. And so I go to the woods. Here I am in the woods, receiving grace and praying. And so... I know, I know what you're talking about. And so what happens? I find you. Right. So like, I feel like I'm growing and I just wanted to hear what you had to say about, you know, the, the patience with that process or, um, yeah, because it's sticky and I do find my mind, yeah. you know, sure, sure, sure. I think it's really wise to go into nature like you. That's what I used to do. You know, I would just take myself off and deepen and deepen into more clarity and then return. And then I'd be clear about what action to take, if any. It's it's the, the moving into more non-attachment, which is really what happens is you attach more to the God within you. You attach more to your true nature and you come less attached and less demanding about other people. You see, you you, <laughs> you don't judge them because you're just so yeah. captivated with your own true nature. And your right. wisdom grows, right? And so you understand that we're all bumbling human beings and everybody's at different places on the journey and they may be in exactly the right place for them spiritually. But maybe you've had more lifetimes, so... Your dharma this lifetime is to 
get to know your true nature more and to embody it. That's good, Simon. I can feel it. There's this willingness to embody your true nature. This is very good. Yeah. That's what to be patient about. Yeah, but I can feel it. It's yeah. like I can feel an opening being made just uh, with your attendance. Well, I don't even know if it's you coming to the satsang. It's just kind of illustrating this opening that's developing in you. But it's an authentic opening, sweetie, and you can trust it. Yes, and as you speak, I'm, I'm realizing that even these human beings, these beings that I'm talking about, they're exactly perfect too, where they are. They are, exactly. Not only for themselves, but for my journey to look and then yes. excavate within what's happening that is keeping me from being in that loving, pure connection with God and just living that. Sure. And sure. that truth. Yeah. So the negativity you're feeling is just the mud of the lotus. Give it over, ask for grace, and you'll be shown. I can feel this. You will be shown. It's good. Good, Simone. Thank you. Thank you. Sweetie, it's a good question for everybody. Everybody will know exactly what you're talking about. Do you all know what I'm talking about? A version of it? Sure, look at them. Yeah. yeah. It's the human condition, you know? Good, thank you. Laura. Thank you for listening. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, I just want to say for Simone, the one thing I've learned from Pramasuda is that we're all exactly where we're supposed to be on this journey. And it's not bad. And I do the same thing. I tend to judge when I feel I'm growing apart from someone and I pull back. And um, it's okay. Laura, did you have a Not question, so sweetie? Bad. Did you have a question? No, I was, I was just commenting. Thank you, Laura. That's really helpful. I don't need to think that it's bad, this process just working through it. Thank you for reminding me that. Brynn, did you have a question? Yes, I, there's a lot of, I feel like disgust coming up for me, like a lot of, um, like with myself, with others, with situations and then um like i guess i'm i make a, um i make actions but it i get okay i feel quite confused like uh which act um how do i articulate so it feel like there's this feeling of quite a um like scattered like you're, like you're flying apart or something like very uh just like I don't know where I am I don't know kind of uh, like what's going on um I feel like I have a better grasp on things but then it doesn't kind of dissolves um so do you have a a regular spiritual practice at all Corinne um, just just be honest like okay. there's no yeah whatever just the truth yeah no I'm I'm coming back to like there's a void for for about a 
year or two, like where I didn't do anything. Um, and now I'm struggling to like, so no, no, like I have small things like greeting the day, but not my, not what I had before. Okay. So this is one of the things with Westerners. It's like when you're on the spiritual journey, if you're really on it with a, a, a teacher, it will be really chaotic for you if you try to evolve without set spiritual practices to help hold you. Do you understand? Even if they're like walking meditations or or dishwashing meditations, it's like what happens with Westerners is our minds start going berserk, basically. Do you see? They start, the soul starts to move and the ego starts flooding our heads with thoughts and uncomfortable feelings come up. So it's, <laughs> it's sort of like to help support yourself on the journey to make time to connect with the creator and something to hold you that you can keep going back to every day because sweetie all these things you're talking about are all feelings and experiences that come up on the journey but without something to ground you, it's, it's easy just to walk around in confusion that's kind of never resolved. Do you understand? Now, yeah. yeah. Right. So, sweetie, Ama talks about building, having a structure for spiritual, you know, uh, of spiritual practices to hold you during difficult times this one in my ignorance i didn't do that but what i had was an overwhelming commitment to move into to embody my soul energy do you see what i mean so i was on it all the time i never left it do you see mm -hmm. You can do it that way. I mean, it's what worked for this one. And I would go through big ups and downs, but I would always find the solution through allowing grace into my body. Okay. So, sweetie, the disgust is ego. The scatteredness is ego. It's like... You could, even if you just sit for 15 minutes twice a day, and not even a formal meditation practice, but if you just sit and watch your thoughts or focus on your heart area. Yeah. Okay, so how do you feel? And again, be really, really honest. I feel there was when you said, um, when you said it doesn't have to be formal, you can sit and watch your thoughts. And um, like I heard in my head, I can do that. Like, okay. yeah. yeah, I, and I felt myself kind of like, I, um, I felt a smile and I kind of relax, like, cause I feel right. I can do that. Like I can do that. Right. Um, and okay. I maybe feel that I couldn't do the others. <laughs> right. Right. So, and, you know, even if you can't sit one day, you could go for a walk. Just honor the, the decision to connect with yourself for these, for this period of time. You see what I mean? So if you can't sit, you can walk or you could do the dishes, but just stay on it. Okay. Okay. Hey. Okay, I, I want to, there's more that needs to be transmitted to you. 
See, one of the one of the things that I come across in Westerners, and I get it. We want to use the spiritual journey to feel better. Okay. Amma says most people that come to her just want to feel better about their pursuit of objects and wealth. And it does not work. It doesn't work. We can't use the spiritual journey to feel better. What you can do is get really interested in who you really are in your true nature, in wanting to serve unconditional love here, to know what it is, to know what love is. Yeah. Right. To really That's know what, what it is. Yeah. yeah. That. Okay. Keep that at the forefront of your mind. Okay. Okay. Right. And you guys, if you're a sincere seeker, there will be some periods where you feel enormous. I won't say enormous, but disgust will come up, scatteredness, hate, fear, whatever. You just keep a focus on the creator, on Ama, whoever, Buddha, whatever. You keep that focus and you keep, you know, asking for help. And what will happen is unconditional love will start flowing into your bodies at a whole new level. You will melt the alienation that you're carrying, that many of us are carrying in ourselves. And you will receive love, but it can be very difficult process. It can be quite hair raising, which is why I offer the satsangs and the questions and answers to help support. Simone was talking about like a patient to be you know, patient with the process. Yeah, that was, hearing Simone talk was very, I felt very pertinent, like, I was like, me too. That was really, uh, the patience, I, I, I find it hard, like, to give yeah. it to myself. Yeah. Right. This is it. And when we're feeling disgust and all this stuff, it's hard to receive love. So, Oh, you have to give, you have to go like, okay, I, I give all this over to you to solve creator because I, I don't know what to do with this stuff, but it's the mud of the Lotus. But you guys remember, you have to be very honorable with the journey. You just have to like, take what comes. And go through what the creator puts you through. Because it's all coming from love. See, we're not really human beings. I mean, this, these human aspects of us, we're going to die. And the spiritual journey is we're wanting to free our eternal natures in this life. It's a very different way of living. And Corinne, you know this, you know, you could be going through a hard time, but maybe if you're working with clients, maybe some of them are having breakthroughs and that gives you feedback that you're on the right track. You see, it's like yeah. that. It's like the razor said, you <laughs> just walk and you look for signs that you're on the right track keep a journal see you guys <laughs> keeping a journal having a meditation practice they're kind of just basic that's basic for for progress on the journey otherwise you're you're inviting chaos Right. It's like you can't if you sign up for a Ph.D. program, you can't just like refuse to go to classes, and not do your homework like that's not going to work. 
we're a bit casual about the journey, but it's we're working with true reality here. So you you want to be respectful of this process and the guidance that that you that you hear. How are you feeling now? Um, I'm feeling, I feel my hips are settled. I feel a little the nausea. Yeah. Feel, and what's, no, yeah, go. Uh, yeah. And nausea is the uh, stomaching divinity. Right. And clearing. Yeah. Right. Yes. Right. Uh, yes. And I feel like on the chest, there's like this kind of, yeah, like feeling um, up there. Okay, is it expanding? Is it nervousness? Is it? Oh, there's two. Uh, I think there's a nervousness and an, like it feels loose underneath, but a little nervous on top. Like, right. Like there's okay. kind of two. Okay. So just be with that data. It's like underneath, you're at peace with this on the surface level. You're a little nervous about this expansion. That's just where you are, okay? And remember, the key to this approach is our bodies will, if we keep the focus on the creator, our bodies make the shift for us. So if we're sincere, our bodies will be moving more into being able to receive grace, unconditional love, and to free our true nature. Right. You're just nervous about it. It feels like it's like underneath, you're like, yes. And then <laughs> on top, you're going, oh, mama, I don't know if that's all right. And just, just put your arms around that. That's your state right now. It's not wrong. It's just a picture of how you are. That's it. It's like, you guys, you, you're entitled to be yourselves. You're entitled to receive love. And sweetie, what, this one's had decades of this kind of experience, so I'm, I'm at peace with it now, but I wasn't. I would walk around with my hair standing on end. Really, for years I did that. Has anybody else got a question? Hi, Permisita. Stephanie. Stephanie, yeah, sweetie. Um, I'm struggling, uh, I think, with... Yeah, just a friendship that I've had in the past. Um, and Simone kind of, uh, kind of reminded me about being patient with myself, but uh, would like your perspective as well. A really good friend of mine um, that we've been good friends, but in, I don't know, something bubbled up about her saying that, you know, I felt offended that she's called me a Hindu um, in the past now being with Amma and I don't, this, ascribe to any particular religious perspective, M maybe Christian or maybe a love of Christ, I would say, not even Christian. But I feel, yeah, she, she kind of just pegged me and didn't really address it because I just mentioned to her, I'm like, no, it's more I, I love Amma, not that I'm necessarily like into a certain religion. Um. But it, it really did strike me. Um, and my relationship with her is, has changed since being with Emma. So it's very difficult now to connect at times. So I don't have very many friendships left. Um, mm -hmm. If anything, I have like two <laughs> right. um, from the past. And right. the other one is also dissolving very quickly. It almost has. Right. And I've mentioned to her, to you about her before. And yeah. um, so this one that's really left and I have a connection with her son as well. Um, and I don't know if it's just temporary. I may be, you know, I'll find you grounding or there'll be more grounding, but I also feel the sadness and loss right now is coming up for me. 
because we are very close and have known each other and taught together as well. So it's also one of my last teaching re- like relationships as a te- connection to teaching too. So I've been so, praying about it the last few days. But yeah. So sort of what's your question about it? So you- my question is, is I feel like I'm looping. I'm praying about it, but I, I, I'm just in this loop it feels like. I've written in my journal about it, but nothing's really coming up except patience yeah. which says Simone came up yeah you know it may take time I mean it may take time you know for you to really unravel the full thing sometimes it can help um, us to move into power if we uh, like learning to be true to ourselves is is sometimes just um finding a way to speak to the person uh, directly about the comment. So she called you a Hindu. Like, um, you know, sometimes we draw back and we hide in our safety deposit box in our hearts and try to figure it out. Okay, please hear that. We draw back, we retreat from the situation, we go into the safety deposit box in the heart and we try to figure it out. And it's not solvable there. Okay. It's solvable by... coming forward in utter innocence and speaking directly to it with a person. So you can, you know, just that you, whatever, you know, go, go inside until the creator gives you their, Amma gives you the words to speak to her with. And then, you have to be prepared that maybe the whole thing will dissolve as a result. You don't know, or a bigger understanding could come. You don't know. It's, it's up to Ama. It's up to the creator. Okay. You, there's nothing for you to hold on to except your connection to truth, your deepening and the creators bringing you, showing you, who to spend time with. Now, one of the things, you guys, that can happen with friends, especially on the journey, we we sometimes, we have a subtle pressure on the, pre- on the friends, like we want them to get it. We want them to get it the way we want them to get it. Okay? And it's actually coming from fear of our own truth. So we want them to change rather than we having to face our own depth. Right. And to see what we're running deep inside our hearts. But believe me, I know from my journey the how stark it can be sometimes when we see the the walls of alienation. And it looks like they're between us and our friends, but actually they're in the cells of our body, these walls of alienation. So when you say you're looping, it's like, I mean, this is really your your step on the journey. I mean, you're being asked to go deeper, Stephanie, than you normally are comfortable with. You're right. And so, yeah, you will loop for a while and it, it, might feel scary to deepen but you'll you know you'll deepen you'll get i mean this is where all the knowledge of the vasanas and the past lives comes from and you know just by being thrown back by life and we get thrown back on ourselves and we're stuck with ourselves you know and if we if we turn to the creator the knowledge will come you will get an understanding. And, you know, she's in a very different space. I mean, she's married with a child. Do you know, you're, you know, right now you're without a job and you're, you know, you, you're just able to do what you want. And so, you know, 
there's a level that this example will be maybe threatening to the whole family on some levels. Do you know? Yeah. Even as the the love for the son is received and validated. But it's it's not their fault either. It's just, you know, there's something that took me a long time to go with, to understand, but it's like, don't take your true self where you're not welcome. Yeah, just don't do it. Don't treat your God self like that. And for us, when we're loving and we keep making overtures and overtures and overtures, but you know, if it, we can hurt ourselves that way. And everybody's got different journeys and life tasks. And, and in my experience, you know, the loss of friends can be very freeing because then there is nothing to stop you from turning to your heart for the answers, to turning to Ama, to the creator for the answers, okay? These attachments have to melt. You know, what happens is the more you move, are true to yourself, then your relationships then tend to reflect that more. So, you know, Prema Sutta is true to herself, so I bond freely with all of you guys. You know, it's nice. Yeah. If you have your own heart, you can you can express it everywhere. See, Westerners, you know, it'll be the bonding with the mother will be in this. There'll be so much in this, Stephanie. It may take you a year to get it all, you know? Yeah. You know, this is where the four decades came from, you know, it's, we get it when we get it. But just keep sincerely turning to the creator for guidance. And know that, you know, you know, that the negative thoughts about people, they hurt them and hurt us. Yeah. Yeah, my heart goes out to you, sweetie. Yeah. But you will become more as a result of this. You know, yeah. Good. This this journey probably sounds like a lot of hard work and angst today. And you know, it's also glorious. It's not always tough. It's sometimes just glorious. It's it's just that you know, Westerners sometimes we're not prepared for the depth of it because we're so outward focused. So we have to like train ourselves, allow ourselves to be helped to learn how to live with an inward focus, like a pregnant woman. She's always got one eye on the inside as well as on the outside. And this is not easy for Westerners by and large. It may help. A long, long time ago, um, I was with a, a teacher and this person said that we were outgrowing all the divas, you know, that help nature, all the divas and fairies, but they were, they were sort of taking care of nature for human beings. But now human beings were, were growing in our development. It's sort of like reaching teenagehood. And it was up, up to us to, to learn how to, take this subtle subtle responsibility for mother nature that these divas and fairies were they were completing the job and it was up, up to us for our hearts to open get bigger in order to take over this this job and you see in our relationships with other human beings it's the same big jump it is a big expansion of understanding a big expansion to learn how to love and honor your true self and also have relationships 
with others from that place of self-honoring. It's a big jump and that's what we're in and we're we're having trouble with it. But, you know, the creator wins, so things will get solved. The bonding with your true nature is key. And that's what, you know, I find in, you know, almost all the people around me, that's the difficulty. And of course, you know, of course, we're, we're raised in this outward focused society. Like, yeah, how could it be otherwise? I mean, it's like you guys are heroes for being interested in finding another way. But your interest in finding another way is helping Mother Nature. This is helping, this is taking over the work of the divas and the fairies in lots of ways, this expansion into this bigger understanding, you see. It does become very, very simple, finally, you guys. I promise you. And Laura, your comment was very sweet. I just, with, with the question and answer, there just been sometimes where people have made comments on the content of somebody else's speaking. And sometimes it's like upset the person. So that's why I was like a little bit, you know, cautious. And I don't know Simon and, um, you know, I just didn't want anything to, to go. Yeah. So it's just something to keep in mind too, just with the comments that sometimes, yeah. But anyway, I, sweetie pie, you have a lovely heart and a, thank you for your input. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, blessings. Yeah, you guys. Yeah, yeah, everybody's, we're all so sensitive, you know? And yeah, you know, Amma says that with our wounding right now, that our wounding's like a, like a red ulcer, like a really sore point. And that when we go to the wounding, it's like, ah! and that's what, that's what can happen sometimes. You know, if it's depending on how many years on the journey the person's had and, uh, you know, how grounded in their spiritual practices they are. Yeah, it's, you know, it's because we're just heroes for doing this work at this time. Okay, just, you got to like a, a badge of heroism, a medal of honor, please. Please receive this from me, please, with all my heart. Oh, my goodness. My hat off. Really? Okay, you can get this. Good. I can feel it. This badge of honor for just, you know, any, any focus on this at all. And please, we're, we're all bumbling human beings. You know? Right. They're heroes. Yeah. I feel this so deeply. This big validation is coming to you. I just feel it so deeply about you. That's it. That's it. Right. Right. That's it. That's it. It's receiving it in your bodies. Yeah. It's the perseverance that works. It's just keeping going. It's never give up. You know, in my 30s with the, with my bumbling idiocy, you know, I had a whole decade of like, I mean, this whole decade was like, I felt like the queen of pain, you know? And that's why I'm like, so want to help you guys because I don't want you going through that. But, you know, you, <laughs> you, you will get whatever pain you, 
you have to experience in order to bring you into surrender so that you open to the love that everything's made out of. And, you, and you'll start getting kind of non-attached to the pain. You just go, okay, I'm sad today, you know, and it won't, it won't upset you. It won't worry you. You'll just be on having a sad day today. Yeah. But the thing you really need to look at inside you, you guys, is how deep is your commitment to the journey? Because that is what I bang up against in people when I'm working. It's like the commitment isn't very deep. And it's like, oh, okay. Uh, there's not much that, that this one can help with then. Yeah. To really get down to how much you really want to bring in your true nature. And if you've got withholds, just notice them. Don't get mad at yourself. Like, please, don't, don't fuss. But just give any withholds over to the creator. Ask for help. Right. But, I mean, you're, you're, you're all intelligent. You see that, like, if you're walking around, like, hopelessly ambivalent, um, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> you're going to get that kind of progress. But sometimes we're raising kids or we, we're at a job that's like 50 hours a week or 60 hours a week. It's like, don't judge yourselves, but just see, let yourself see. You guys, you can see stuff in yourself without judging it and just go, oh, yeah, okay. I told you, I used to think that, that, that as a reward for the spiritual journey, I'm not kidding, that I would get some house sort of brought to me on, I don't know, chariot wheels or something finally to live in. Like, <laughs> it's like, Grandma Suda, how deluded. I mean, you know, if that was my dharma, that would happen. It's not like it couldn't happen, but... It is a, a distortion of the spiritual journey to have a, a desire like that or to have a, a bartering thing going like that, you know? And we just get shown it doesn't work and we grow out of it. Yeah, you guys. And, you know, when, when this one gets a little tough, it's because this one is so soft. If I don't bring in toughness, we end up in cloud cuckoo land. It was like raising the boys, you know? I was so soft and everything. And then suddenly I'd be like, what the hell? What's going on? And I'd have to get tough to bring things back to center. It's very similar with the journey with you guys. It's, it's, I can be, I'll be really soft and everything. And then when I, when I encounter ego, I will be really tough because otherwise we end up in cloud cuckoo land. That's, that's not good work. But it's not personal, you guys. It's not personal. It's just like a surgeon to remove the ego. That's all. Yeah. Right. That's why you come. You don't come to be molly coddled. You know, hopefully. It's like... Hopefully, of course, we all want to be modeling puddle, but, you know, underneath, you know, you really want to wake up. That's the only reason I ever get tough with people, just because this one is so soft. Yeah, good. Maybe this will help. Yeah, your understanding and being able to receive this. Yeah. Anybody else got any questions or comments? Hi, Pramasuda. Anna, sweet Hi. one. 
you know. Hello. Oh, that's so good to see you. And this really helped. Just it helped so much what you just said because I'm in, you know, you know, I'm such a model. Then I'm I'm in situations I'm I'm fine again. Like I feel more more peace. And uh, this morning I thought, oh yay. I'm feeling better and I'm doing it and everything. So, and uh, then um, I um, indulged myself with a beautiful day and I went into the sauna and I had a good time there and I felt so relaxed and, uh, you know, being with my mantra all the time. And then I came back and all of a sudden I feel this... Uh, up again and my question or my what I wanted to tell you is that I feel um, these bodily sensations more and more in the last weeks it's like a tingling and normally when I had tingles before it was always lovely it was oh it was a um sparkling lightful tingling sensation it and now these tingles are mixed with numbness and uh, sometimes i i feel them really heavily like being poisonous tingles when right. when right. darkness comes up it's so like sometimes i feel my lips yes. get blue Yes. I can't feel it anymore. Yes. And my yes. hands are off. Right. Yes. Anna, it's so good you're speaking about this. I am very, very happy. And we could also speak um, on the phone if you wish, but maybe that's not necessary. You know? Okay. Okay. Anna. May you be ready to hear this, okay? Because I've been saying it to you for five years, okay? So Anna, when you were when you got up this morning and you went, you were feeling good, and it's like, yay, I'm doing it, right? Right? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. It was like that is the problem. That is the problem. It's making, oh, and this is so common, you guys, making a judgment oh. about, like, about yourself this way. Like, as if this is a game and you're doing it right and you've got it now. And the, the, the other state of, you know, the opposite of that is bad. Anna, and this oh. is why you're getting poisoned with the numbness because, because, you know, why it's tingles and numbness because you really need to see this and refusal to see it will steer you into being number. Do you see what I mean? Because it's yeah. time for you to yeah. see it. And if yeah. you refuse to see it, then you're choosing numbness because you've already paid quite a big cost for this, for what, for what went on recently. You've paid a yes. big cost for it. Okay. And the reason is because the universe really wants you to get this and move into truth. Or refuse to get it and the numbness will increase you guys this is what the journey's like it is true reality there is no messing around with it we cannot keep the journey and remain in our egos so anna like this is stunning work this is what I hoped for. And you already had a dream of you being illuminated, remember? And as I said to you, hold on to that dream. That yes. signals that you're going in the right direction. Okay? Yeah. Right. 
Right. So when you don't know, and Corinne too, when you don't know what's up or down or whatever, you hold on to anything, right, Jenna, anything you've you can find that signals that you're on the right track. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You, you, and sweetie, you, yeah, you just need to be very patient, but be on it. It's patient and stay on it. All of you guys, that's the key. Patient and staying on it. And getting Anna stepping back and getting really interested in what you do to yourself. Yeah. Right? Because this is the injured little child going, oh, I've got it now. It's all sewn up. I'm pleasing mama, you know, ama, mama, premisuda, I've got it. And it's like, no. It's, you're, if you're feeling good, it's just, you know, it's sure, it's lovely to feel good. It's wonderful to feel good and enjoy it. Enjoy it fully. Yeah, revel in it. But don't go, oh, I'm doing it right now. Do you, and it's, it is just a subtle thing with your mind. It's where you're attached and it will be where you're attached to your family as well. Right. But it's interesting. I'm getting, you're brave enough to do this, Anna. Where else are you going to go anyway, right? Like, if you go on the journey, it gets so that you, you have to stay on it. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So... I'm seeing like clear air around you now. It's, it's like the clarity coming out of the confusion, you know, this is the clarity, right? It's very subtle stuff. It's how we are with ourselves. We're taught to be cogs in a machine mm. and to move into that we're a value in ourselves is, is just the most radical thing you can do. but it's the thing that helps most. So, and I, and I, I, I really value your increased honesty and increased vulnerability. This is really, really good. So how are you feeling right now? I can feel, um... I still feel the the tingles, mm -hmm. but I um, I feel a bit more clarity. I don't know where it's it's everywhere around me and in me, and uh, and again, don't judge the numbness. No, 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 no. Yeah. It's like it's it's. Um, it's like a um, it's like comforting me. It's like being with me. Just um, yes, good. It's it's um, it's like a, at the moment. It's even soothing, and it's okay. yeah, yeah, and it's okay. I feel you know. I got this when you were talking i got this picture of me embracing all of me not right. you know the whole, right. whole the whole package and the the numbness and the tingling and the poisonous stuff and it, yes. it makes so much sense you know it's like i feel a bit more whole Yes. And the tingling is like a, a beautiful light blanket uh, on my skin. It's it's beautiful on my skin. And it's just. Uh... Okay, so that subtle feeling of being more whole is actually a huge spiritual step 
that you took and because we're working in this like the feminine face of god work these steps can be taken so seamlessly like this and since we've been deeply associated over five years and i've stayed with you and stuff there's a level of trust there that is allowing and also you know you you know it's like when we're not 30 anymore we we realize that we got to get this done before death right like you know we get more motivated sometimes yeah 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 but that feeling yeah. of wholeness that's it and you put your yeah. arms around yourselves and you guys then you become attached to your own truth and then more non-attached to everything else mm -hmm. but then more yeah. loving with everything else you actually can love more deeply yeah good yeah. wow victory j ma really victory this is a victory good but don't hang on to the victory thing i'm sorry no, i said i i was just no i was just going like stay humble uh, be just be humble and everything will yeah just be yourself be, uh, you know yeah, yeah. what yeah. else I mean, what else could we be other than ourselves? I mean, yeah, yeah that's it. Mm. That's it. Okay, good. Whole and hearty, full of heart, whole and hearty. And, whole and hearty, yeah. Yeah, and heart Perfect. spells here with a T, here, listening to this, to mm. this soft, silent, soft voice. Hear, hear your heart. Yeah. It's also simple. It's just, the thing is to just do it. Yeah. 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 Wow, oh, it's very good. Thank you so much, Prima Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for speaking. Blessings, Anna. Thank you. Masuda. Yeah. Jenna. Um, in this last week, I've been um, experiencing a lot of uh, sensations of anger, specifically towards my mom. And with the election in the, in the U.S., uh, there's a it seems like an outward example of the choice that you speak of, of choosing which direction we're going to go towards love or towards violence. And I'm having a difficult time knowing um, that my mom, you know, that um, in a lot of ways that she chooses to stay asleep. Um, And I think my question is, you have given me a lot of uh, support in thinking through and examining how, as I am going through this journey of retrieving my soul and hearing my heart and um, asking the question of who I really am as, as I, uh, because as I draw closer to that information, I feel an, an old, um, just a ha habit of mine to want to give it away. And I don't know how to take care of it. Um, and I think my question is around family. Um, feel a feeling of responsibility towards, um, yeah family both and like physical taking care of family in this earth plane but also maybe um karma right of why i even chose this family in in the first place um but also like how to take care of my true nature in the meantime yeah yeah so i'm 
I'm feeling, you know, sweetie, like the confusion. Yeah. It's like multi-level confusion. And uh, I, yeah. So okay. I think for you to just get that, that there's a level of confusion in you. Yeah. So I'm, I don't know that I can even answer your question okay. from where it was posed, you see? But I can offer you unconditional love and guidance to help you grow. So you know that whatever you see in your mom is reflecting you, right? Yeah, and that's your point of power is understanding that everything you see is telling you about you. Even the election, everything. Yeah, so what I feel like is when you go to you, what you hit are levels of shame that you don't know how to process, get through, uh, love yourself enough to give over. Yeah, right, right. So there's storylines about the flaws of our parents, right, and mistakes of our parents. And sweetie, this is just human. It's, it's, it's not, you know, it's just not going to work on the journey. It's, it's a deeper level of love for you to receive and you, you're scared and you don't know how to do it, you know? And, you know, when we're intelligent and creative, we can get very busy in our minds. And I mean, everybody here is intelligent. So we all know what that's like, you know, the labyrinth and all the opinions and judgments of the labyrinth. But the thing is, it's like Jenna's true nature here who doesn't get enough airtime <laughs> and and it uses the shame and then also you've got this fear around survival it's like you know well maybe if i move into truth i'm not going to be able to stay at my job and it's like it, it you can't, it's not going to work thinking like that it's like this is like the level of sincerity it's like we're either on the journey or not right it's kind of like you know, but we have to be patient with ourselves because this stuff is just human. But sweetie, the, the real problem is the level of shame that is covering up your true nature. So when I'm speaking to you right now, I'm seeing this level of shame and I'm, I'm just wanting to connect up with you, to love you. I do love you, the love's coming. This one had a lot of shame too. So, yeah. So, what are you doing with this in your head? Just don't worry about being bad or good. Just what's your response to what I'm saying? Um, well, <clears throat> just my wanting to do something about it. You know, um, right. yeah, wanting to get it, wanting a to do list, wanting to take action. Yeah. Okay. So there it is. There's yeah. the. That's and and it's like it's a form you guys we get crippled by this really. We're crippled by it till we learn to move through it. We're crippled by this to do thing until we learn to love ourselves enough that we can just be. And you're you're skittish with me, Jenna, even like you're like a, you know, a skittish racehorse. You really, you really want it. And at the same time, you know, you, you push me away a little bit, like, you know, sort of you want um, uh, doses of me that, that are manageable and that's okay. That's okay. It's, it's okay that it's like that. Yeah, sweetie, I mean, at root, you're, the, okay, the thing that's really bothering you is you're not sure that the shame thing isn't true. 
that is the thing that's bothering you. Part of you thinks it's true. And it's not. It's the opposite, dear one. It's just the opposite. Sweetie pie. Yeah, you poor, poor hurt heart. But I don't mean that in a pitting way at all. Just utter compassion. Right. Right. We think it might be true. And it's not. <laughs> it's not. Yeah, sweetie. Oh, sweetheart. Yeah. You guys, this is, you know, what's also with the women, you know, we we're, 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 we we learn to be ashamed of our true nature. So part of us goes like it's really true and it's not. You see, you get hypnotized by your busy mind and it takes you into these stories and it's. Yep. But Jenna, sweet one, if anybody has shown themselves to be sturdy on the journey, it's you because you kept going when for months there was so little to keep you going, so little, you know, that was coming through to keep you on the journey and you stayed on it that's what i see in you it's like a persistence that's just off the charts yeah yeah there was basically no positive feedback that you were on the right track for about a year till you had that dream mm. that pivotal dream yeah and you kept going and, you know, you're at the hardest part of the journey. This is the foundation work. There's a lot of effort for not much payoff. For anybody who's in their 30s, sometimes it's just like this. But the payoff will show later. Your hair might be white, but it will show. I promise you. I promise you. There will be Absolutely. enormous payoff for this. And if you just get a little, like, I feel like maybe this is giving you permission to be just a little lighter with yourself. Like, um, yeah, like you're beautiful. It's just beautiful. This is, you know, when, when Abraham told me like I was a great mother and a great student and I didn't feel any better because I was feeling shame about being Janet. Just like what you feel, Jenna, shame about being Jenna, but you'll grow out of it. It's loosening even as we're talking. And in everybody else, may that be so, because it's just such baloney. You're going, I can hear you saying to me, if I let go of this shame, who will I be? Well, you'll, <laughs> yeah. you'll be Jenny in the light. <laughs> you know? you see this is where we're where our ambivalence shows right we go like well it's kind of hell but if i let go of but maybe if i let go of hell it's going to be even worse this is what we're like but remember sweetie you've got a teacher who's saying this directly to you so you're kind of honor bound to keep it in mind you know mm -hmm. yeah Right. The universe pays attention to how we respond to love. Yeah. Right. 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 Okay, good. You got that. Sometimes it's good. You know, Alma says that basically people in Kali Yuga don't turn to God except out of fear. You know, that we get like fear of God. Finally, we start seeing like that if we don't choose this, that worse things are going to happen. And the reason Kali Yuga, it's, it's like this is because we've got so many defenses. So usually we don't turn to God unless we're actually a little scared and then we'll 
turn to God and get sincere. Mm -hmm. Right. So how do you feel now? I feel um, like I'm, my center of gravity has shifted to um, lower in my body. I feel um, I feel like I waffle back and forth between what feels like a much younger version of myself and then um, a now version of myself. And I feel more in my body and more in my, my now self. Right. But there's yeah. a little bit of right. And there's a little hint of a judgment there about your earlier self. It's like, you know, this is just uh, the shell splitting on the next level of growth. It's always like this, Jenna. Okay. Yeah. And the earlier vi version of yourself that you're calling earlier is just the, sh the old shell mm. splitting. This happens over and over. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I'm just wanting to yeah expand your your view to so that you see it's not a shameful process. It's it's an organic, natural process. We just go through it psychologically, just like Mother Nature goes through it in the outside world. We go through this in psychologically. Right. Right. You feel better. Feels better to me. This is good. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You know, we're, we're, it, yeah, it's accelerating you guys. So these, these shifts, you know, you can make them very organically. Yeah. It's beautiful work today at the satsang, you guys, all of you, whether you spoke or not, all of you. Yeah, and hearing this, just hearing and hearing the responses, it will it will help stabilize you. Some of you have been feeling a little unstable. It'll help stabilize you, and um, it's like fertilization for your own growth. It'll bubble up. It will help your unconscious. It will help you just understand how growth takes place. Yeah, be beautiful, you guys. All right. Well, blessings, you guys.